Good morning to each and every one of you. On this beautiful, wonderful day the Lord has created. This is a day for you to rejoice. For this is the day that shows us and the world that Jesus came from heaven down to earth and he has made a way. So this is the day for us to celebrate the goodness of God and the love and the favor and the mercy of God. We're going to look at the word of God and prepare ourselves, align ourselves this morning on each and every one of you to check where you are in Christ Jesus and what path and what direction you are facing and to renew yourself with all that God has revealed in his word so that your mind and your body and your life is in alignment according to the word of God and his plans for your life. So why don't you stand up as we read God's word from the book of Revelation chapter 21. We can read from verse 1 to verse 5. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Here it reveals to us what God has made for us, the commitment he has for each and every one of us, for all of humanity and mankind, how he will prepare a wonderful and an awesome place for all those who know and follow him. Therefore, from verse 1, Revelation chapter 21, let us all join together and read along with me from the word of God. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Thank you. May be seated. We can see here that God is revealing to us what will happen in this universe and to this universe, what will happen on this earth and to this earth. The world that we are in, the earth that we stand on, that we are living in, will be no more. He says the first earth had passed away. Means that there were no more of the things that we are now used to, the things that we hold dear and the things that we are familiar with right now, all of them will completely be removed. Therefore, live your life according to that, knowing that God is preparing a new heaven and a new earth. And you've got to be ready to enter that place and you've got to secure your place there. We have many people on earth who work hard so that they can get things on this earth, so that they can buy property and they can have houses and they try to accumulate a lot of wealth and store it in different places. They don't put it in one place. They make investments and they divide all the wealth that they have it and some of them even store it in other nations so that anything happens to one particular wealth that they have in one particular location then they can depend on something else. Man is always trying to get himself secure. There is nothing wrong but you got to know that at any time all this will completely cease to exist and then what will happen to all the wealth and everything that we worked hard and received that is what Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 and 20 do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal because the day of the Lord is fast approaching we are right now in the first Sunday of lockdown after nearly more than two years, 2019, the world was hit with a warning, a wake-up call for everybody to know that the world that we are living in would not always continue to be there. How much we take care of it, how much we do our best to ensure that the environment is safe and that it is in a good position, 
still one day it will all be removed that's what the word of god reveals to us we got to live and know that the day of the lord will come have no doubt about it the prophecies of jesus have already come true matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 25 where he said the things that will happen before the end of the age the sorrows that will take place all that the world is facing all these waves that hit humanity are the ones that ensure that man wakes up that he realizes that he needs to align his life according to the word of god we are right now on the first sunday of lockdown our prayer and our hope is that very soon the church would be opened up so that we can meet again this is another thing that has been allowed by god so that those who slumber those who are lost those who are distracted those who still continue in their old ways living in in their own old lives trying to get back to the things that they're supposed to have removed from their life that they will know that this world is temporary it is not eternal for god is the only one who lives in eternity and if we know jesus he will take you and he will keep you in all of eternity how will all this end revelation chapter 20 verse 11 it says i saw a great white throne that will be the end of this earth as we know is the end of this universe as we know it when the great white throne is set up for jesus christ and him who sat on it and from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them they disintegrate they get burnt up they disappear completely because of the unrighteousness of man and the evil acts that have been performed that this world has been affected and it is soaked up with the blood of the innocent that is why god does not want this world and this earth to continue anymore and he is coming as a thief in the night matthew chapter 24 verse 42 onwards jesus says what's there for for you do not know what hour your lord is coming but know this that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into the entire world needs to know this truth that jesus is going to come for his church and then there will be a time of tribulation like the world has never seen and then the heavens will be torn and jesus will come in glory with the armies from heaven and he will establish his throne on here right there in israel in jerusalem and he'll rule and reign on earth for a thousand years and every eye will see him and at the end of that is when the great white throne will be set up to judge everyone who ever lived on earth every being oh and all that is there on earth and everything in heaven and everything under the earth will be judged according to all their works and their acts and they will be sent to the place that is prepared for them but those who know jesus christ will be with him in that new heaven and the new earth but those who do not have jesus will find themselves in the lake of fire that's why he says the following verse matthew chapter 24 verse 44 saying therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect who then is a faithful and wise servant are you been faithful have you been wise taking care of the affairs of your life and not allowing anything that can stain you anything that can bring in darkness in your life to continue in your life i've been faithful to the call i faithful to what god has appointed you to do on earth then when his master made him ruler comes he will give him food in due season that's what will happen to those who are faithful and those who are wise you've got to know what are the things that will keep you on the right path what are the things that can take you away and lead you astray from god the disciples of jesus at the end of a particular season and period and age when jesus was going to end his earthly ministry and be crucified and then after that buried 
and rise again at that stage he prepared for them a wonderful last supper and they had communion with him and then they went to the garden of Gethsemane but in that garden when Jesus asked them to pray and be ready they were not able to do so we see here that they were deep in sleep Matthew chapter 26 you can see all that happens it says that Jesus told them I am very sorrowful exceedingly sorrowful that my feeling is that I am almost crushed to death stay here and watch with me is what he had told them then he went to pray and after praying he came back in an hour's time and then he looked at his disciples and the Bible says that he found them sleeping and he said to Peter what could you not watch with me one hour every time we get shaken up on earth we've got to realize and we've got to check ourselves to see what state we are in in our relationship with the Lord will he find us waiting and watching and praying and still in connection with him or have you got distracted or have you slowed down and allowed something to creep in is there a haze and a daze in your life that you do not know what is happening around and you're just hoping that the next day you'll get closer to God that the next week you will make it up to God in the next month all things will fall in place in the next year I will be available oh it might be too late by that time that is why Jesus is telling watch and pray lest you enter into temptation this word holds true for all those who are in the body of Christ to each and every one of you watch and pray lest you enter into temptation he went again and prayed and second time then he came back and found them asleep again then he went away the third time and he prayed the third time to God the Father and when he came back finally he looks at them and they're still sleeping three hours they've been sleeping three hours Jesus has been praying and watching and then he asked them are you still sleeping and resting those are the words that I want to ask each and every one of you are watching you who started following the Lord Jesus Christ you who made your life oh as a sacrifice to him and you said oh Lord I'll pick up my cross daily and follow you are you sleeping and resting or are you still following the Lord which position and state are you in is your connection with the Lord is your relationship with the Lord intact here we see that the moment had come the end of all that they had hoped for the wonderful glorious three and a half years had come to an abrupt end for Jesus said behold the hour is at hand and the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners rise let us be going see my betrayer is at hand and they were woken up from their sleep and you know how it will be when you are in a deep sleep three hours not getting up the Lord trying again and again to wake you up and then they get up and hear these words and suddenly they see their whole band of people with swords and clubs and chains and torches coming in the night to capture Jesus Christ and they would have been startled they would have been shocked they would have not expected that to happen but Jesus was prepared when they were not prepared are you prepared and ready do not be found in this portion that the disciples found themselves to be in what happened when they came and captured Jesus at the tower when they're supposed to stand with him and walk behind him and be a support to him pray along with him and watch with him they fail the Lord and it says in Mark chapter 14 verse 50 then they all forsook him and fled because they had not prepared their mind and their heart for that moment for that hour be prepared be ready so that when the last trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ are raised up then we who are alive and remain might be caught up that will be transformed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and meet the Lord in the air in the clouds with glory and we will be with him forever and ever and then hell will be unleashed on earth do not be on earth at that time what will happen to the earth 
when Jesus finishes his thousand year reign Peter writes to us about it in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 it says that all the heavens will pass away with a great noise as a white throne is set up and every human being who ever lived on earth is judged and all the fallen angels are judged then and they are put in their place and God separates the sheep from the goats then he will destroy all that is there and with a loud shrill noise oh the heavens will pass away all the stars and the galaxies that are there billions of them each and every one of them will disappear like a balloon that is deflated i know if you down that at any time blow the balloon up fully and then without tying it up just let it loose and it goes and then disappears completely in that same fashion and man of the universe will explode with a loud shrill noise and it'll be no more everything in it will melt he says and the elements will melt with fervent heat everything will completely melt and burn up and desire will disappear the whole universe will cease to exist and do not think that the earth will continue at that time he continues saying both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up all the wonderful things that man has built up all the things that he's accumulated all the wealth and the gold and the silver the treasures and everything that is there god is not going to take anything he's not going to take the gold he's not to retrieve the silver or any of the precious stones that are there it is revealed here the earth and all the works all that men built for themselves mighty massive monuments and statues to show their power to show who they are for generations to come all the big mansions and the palaces big buildings and everything that he set up on earth everything not one of them will be kept all of them will be burnt up with fire imagine the fire that melts stone fire that melts all the metals jesus said in mark chapter 13 was 31 heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away you got to live your life according to the word of god that is why we are seeing what god has revealed in book of revelation chapter 20 21 and what he's revealed in second peter chapter 3 so that you prepared for the earth that is to come and not get carried away with the earth that is there which is temporal at any moment jesus can come and then the chain of events will start and then it will be too late therefore live for the lord jesus christ look for him peter tells the church in verse 12 looking for the lord's return always looking never lose that focus all these are the signs all these are the messages every time the world is shaken up it means that it is going through a particular stage it is reaching the end of the age for we have to be prepared we have to be ready everyone will ask why is this happening what is the reason they just have to investigate and research ask around and definitely they will hear what the word of god says and then they've got to read it you've got to read it and see what jesus has said what this prophetic book this accurate true word says that will take place on earth and you've got to live your life according to that and we the church need to hasten the return of the lord that's what he says looking for and hastening the coming of the day of god we've got to tell the people that jesus is coming soon i remember even i was a small boy in church i used to see all around the city painted on the walls like how posters used to be there people going around christians painting on the walls saying jesus is coming soon but now i hardly see in the same city i could go on all the main roads and i could see it written jesus is coming soon jesus is coming soon but now people are talking the church is talking about this is coming that is coming lockdown is coming they more talking about the destruction and all the 
pain and the suffering that is going to come than about Jesus Christ coming. You got to open your mouth and speak good things. Say, Jesus is coming soon. Oh, then you will be taken up to be with him in heaven. Better days ahead. Do not worry. That's what you got to be saying. Not stirring up fear and not stirring up confusion by saying this is coming that is coming even in the last year even before 2022 took place there were many saying oh in january this will happen in february this will happen and oh those words are very dangerous you got to know what you're expecting and what you're saying do not unnecessarily say oh this is going to happen they're going to lock down another wave is going to come people are going to oh experience this and that it's better that you not say anything at all than to say something that is negative and unnecessary because when you keep saying it is like as if calling forth an evil spirit of sickness saying oh, oh this sickness is coming this sickness is coming and even if the sickness did not plan to come the devil will hold on to that word and he will say oh they are the ones who said this is coming so i better go and give the sickness that they're looking for they are the ones who wanted restriction they are the ones who wanted to be locked down and put up and held up so maybe i should go and give them that you got to be very careful with your words but one thing you got to say and hasten is the coming of the day of the lord not anything else therefore since he's coming what are you supposed to do you've got to be holy first speak second peter chapter 3 verse 11 he says therefore since all these things will be dissolved what manner of persons ought you to be to be in holy conduct you have to conduct yourself in a holy fashion and manner it says you know that all these things are going to be destroyed your life should be holy you got to live a clean life and you can be holy only when you are in the presence of god and god dwells inside of you man's holiness is from god and when you put on christ you will be holy like he is holy first peter chapter 1 verse 15 he says but as he called you his holy you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written be holy for i am holy that is what god expects and if god expects that then it is truly possible do not let your physical corrupted body and your fallen mind keep you back from connecting with god ignore them in the spirit worship god in spirit and in truth and in his presence you will be made holy and you will get the touch of god and your mind will be renewed your body will be brought into alignment with his plan and it says in verse 17 and if you call on the father who without partiality judges according to each one's work conduct yourself throughout the time of your stay here in fear knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of jesus christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot therefore he says in verse 13 gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of jesus christ as obedient children not confirming yourself not confirming yourself to the former lust as in your ignorance therefore you got to be dedicated to the lord jesus christ that's what he's saying since all these things will be dissolved what manner of persons you ought to be in godliness you got to live a life that is dedicated to god god has always got to be there in your thought in your life you should serve and honor god by the way that you live be committed to jesus christ that is what we are seeing this morning being committed to him forever we live in a world where commitment would be a strange word man finds it the most difficult to be committed they break all commitments anywhere at any time all they think about is themselves as long as they get what they want they will act to be committed 
that's how the mind and the nature of the world is that is what the lie that is spreading in the world but you follow the Lord Jesus Christ you got to be first committed to Jesus and be committed to the ones you're married to and committed to the people who are there in your life you cannot break that commitment that you have made with him for God has revealed his commitment to you that is why he took John his apostle and showed him this new heaven and a new earth so that he would know that God has prepared all of this Jesus told 2000 years ago to his apostles and disciples in John chapter 14 I go to prepare a place for you and it has been 2000 years and God has prepared a wonderful place for all those who follow him why has he already done it he could have waited till the return of Jesus Christ and at the end of thousand years or he could have gathered everybody and then he could have created a new heaven and a new earth there is still time in six days God could create this create this beautiful earth he would have just needed a few days to create a new heaven and a new earth like that but he is not waiting till such a long time he's prepared it already why so that you would know that he's committed it is like he's saying I've got the house ready for you so hold on be committed this is there for you don't let the temporary things of the world distract you keep your eyes focused on this look unto this know that I'm faithful I'm true I am committed to you and I will take you to this place if you keep following me that's what Peter's writing and saying second Peter 3 13 nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells because unrighteousness has stained this world God is preparing a beautiful wonderful place where there would be no sin that would ever been committed nor will it ever be committed that is why you've got to live a holy and a clean life and show God I am following you faithfully so that he can also take you there you have to be committed to Jesus Christ forever not just in particular seasons not just on Sundays not just during the days in which there is a service but each and every day get up and renew your covenant and your commitment with him for you're called and appointed first Peter 2 9 he says you are a chosen generation each and every one of you follow the Lord Jesus Christ you're a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people oh turn to the person sitting next to you and tap them and say you're special to God tell them you're chosen by God from all the people of the world you are a royal priest tell them you belong to the holy nation of God why so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you where did he call you out out of darkness into his marvelous light he called you by name and when you heard his voice even if you did not understand it at the time still you obeyed and you opened your heart and you gave your life to him and you were born again you were born into this kingdom of God that's how you started following the Lord and the commitment and the covenant you entered at that time maintain and keep it Jesus is the one who goes about calling his disciples mark 8 34 it says when he had called the person to himself with his disciple also he said to them who desires to come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me whoever anybody on this earth you can follow the Lord Jesus Christ even this morning you can say here I am Lord I want to follow you that's all that is needed anybody or not any human being can follow the Lord Jesus Christ he says for who desires to save his life will lose it but who loses his life for my sake and for the gospel will save it for what profit what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul 
having gained the whole world if you lose your life without having Jesus Christ then what a loss that is the only sin that God looks at is the sin of rejecting Jesus Christ God is willing to forgive and cleanse everyone from all unrighteousness this time when you hear this message all of you hear it on a Sunday morning know that you have to accept Jesus Christ and when you accept him you will receive that eternal gift that God has already prepared for you and only thing you need to do is accept Jesus Christ remember that there was a criminal hanging on the cross he accepted his condemnation saying we justly are receiving our reward and just before his death he looked unto the Lord and said Lord remember me God didn't point out any of his faults any of his sins any of the crimes that he had committed he said assuredly I say unto you will be with me in paradise all you have to do is call on the name of the Lord Jesus and say Lord I want you to be my God take me to heaven I surrender myself that's all that's all that is needed the one sin that will keep you away from heaven is rejecting Jesus Christ so do not commit that sin accept Jesus Christ and be faithful until the end Jesus says in John chapter 6 verse 37 the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out have no doubt at any time when you come to the Lord that he'll never reject you Jesus Christ will never reject anyone he will accept each and every one of you at any time at any day approach him and call on his name and you will enter into his kingdom be faithful to him those of you have entered he writes and gives this message to this church in Smyrna to the Christians who are there under great persecution he says I know your works tribulation and poverty but he tells him but you are rich and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not but are a synagogue of Satan and he tells them do not fear any of these things which you are about to suffer indeed the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days he is writing this specifically to the Christians who are there but he tells them be faithful unto death though they are going to face tribulation for 10 days and be thrown in prison he's telling them be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life those same words hold true to each and every one of you be faithful unto death unto Jesus Christ that's how you survive no matter what happens in these times in these days hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ do not deny him be faithful unto him Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 Jesus said he who endures to the end shall be saved you got to endure forever till the end even if you're not able to give an answer at times to the questions someone might ask about why your life is like this or what is happening to you and all the things that are taking place if you are not able to answer them it is still all right you still hold on to the Lord you just keep quiet and just stay firm stand strong in the Lord and keep walking keep following him these days you need to shine you need to persevere just like how he saw on the 25th of December that if we take Mary and Joseph as an example and how they endured such difficulty to fulfill the plan of God and because they endured such difficulty Oh, all of humanity is blessed because they gave birth to Jesus Christ and took care of him as a baby and brought him up in the right fashion and manner fulfilling all the law and the prophets and doing everything at the right fashion and manner without looking at the pain and the suffering that they had to endure for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ each and every one of you shine like them no matter how difficult your days are and the things that you have to do for the Lord 
do not let anything separate you from the love and your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ keep pursuing him keep following him oh keep true to him keep praising keep thanking oh and then you will prosper forever you will live forever he will give you perfect health forever and you will receive not just on this earth but for all of eternity God is a God who makes covenant and he keeps it it's an agreement between two people you got to enter into a covenant with the Lord when you get baptized in water that is the time you entered into a covenant with the Lord saying Lord I will follow you and dedicate my life to you the old things are no more that is why you go fully under water that the old man is no more and then you come back up identifying with the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ how he had a physical human body but after he rose from the grave he had a glorified body that he could be like God Almighty and you got to in the same fashion and manner have your lives transformed and be in that state of renewed transformation so that you continue to follow the Lord keep that covenant with him this word might be very new to many people on this earth but the Bible reveals to us that our God is a God who enters into agreement he's committed if you are committed to him then you will receive from him all the things that he said in his word just want to see three covenants that God entered to show you so that you will know that God is a God who is committed his words are true he remains faithful till the very end the first person he called and made a covenant with was Abraham there are many other covenants in the Bible but I want to see these first it says in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 that the Lord said to Abraham get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you this was the call of God for Abraham he had to leave all of them behind so that he can follow the Lord so that the Lord can work in his life if he had remained there then the Lord could have not fulfilled his plan in his life sometimes you have to leave your comforts you have to relocate so that you can fulfill the call and the plan of God in your life so that you can show unto him that you are true and that you are willing to leave behind everything so that you show that you are truly completely dedicated to him for God promised him saying I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and God fulfill this we know that Jesus Christ was born oh in that same nation to that same family and all the nations of the world are blessed all the people of the world are blessed and everyone knows who Abraham is and many children are given that name why because God made his name great this same God will bless you and he will make you great and he is the one who can establish you so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him and he left that comfortable convenient location and started following the Lord not knowing where he was going to go but he just at 75 years of age he followed the Lord and then after many years it says in Genesis chapter 17 when he was 99 years old that the Lord appeared to Abraham and he revealed himself to him and he said in verse 2 and I will make my covenant between you and me and will multiply you exceedingly and again he says in verse 4 as for me behold my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations and God revealed himself to Abraham it says Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him at that time you got to come and worship God and you got to give God the opportunity and the privilege to talk with you by putting yourself in that position in that situation where he can communicate with you do not separate yourself from the Lord keep following him and what happened that chapter it says again he said in verse 
7 i will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be god to you and your descendants after you your god jesus christ made that same everlasting covenant to be your god he is the shepherd who will be with you even as you walk through the valley of shadow of death there is no one no one on earth no other power nothing else that can save you everyone on earth one day if the lord tarries will breathe their last at that stage when they die what will happen to that eternal spirit each and every one of you have been blessed with an eternal spirit and that spirit will either be taken into heaven or it will be sent to hell if it does not know jesus christ and have accepted him as the lord god and savior and his everlasting covenant will come true at that time for he will send his angels and he will call you and he'll take you to heaven god is the only one who can keep such an everlasting covenant men can make covenants but when they breathe their last then who will fulfill and keep their word god made that covenant not just to abraham saying to you i will be a god i do not know about the generations that will follow you and your children no he said i will be a god to you and to your descendants after you and i will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger all the land of canaan as an everlasting possession and i will be their god the word that he spoke to abraham he kept abraham could not have that place as a nation they were taken into egypt and then they came back out of egypt and that's when they entered into the land of canaan nearly 400 years after he spoke to abraham but god was true we know that and israel is still a nation after thousands of years here or not as a big marvel and a big mystery to the people of the world though there are many nations which want to wipe israel out of the face of the earth and reclaim that land and take it back for themselves but god's word that he spoke and is written in his bible thousands of years ago is still true he has given it to them as an everlasting possession and he has been their god even when they did not listen to him he sent prophets he raised up so that people would be brought back to god even when they wandered away from him he poured out his spirit at each and every generation so that the people would be stirred up why did he do that because of the covenant he entered with abraham at that time and what did god ask of abraham In verse 19 he said and god said to abraham as for you you shall keep my covenant and you and your descendants after you throughout their generation they had to show their part of the covenant and this covenant was made with the shedding of blood by abraham and his descendants after him and that was through circumcision and when the baby is born on the eighth day they present the baby to the lord mary and joseph presented jesus christ by walking nearly 170 kilometers might have had to start walking right after she gave birth to jesus christ to reach jerusalem and present the baby to the lord so that they can show that they're thankful that they're committed that they're keeping the covenant with the lord and he would have been circumcised on that eighth day because they knew they had to keep that covenant when they keep that covenant then the blessing of the lord and the provision of the lord and the protection of the lord oh comes upon the baby and they knew that and they hastened themselves and they made their way to the temple and the house of god that is why you got to present yourself every time we gather here in the house of god oh be here this thursday do not miss it get up and be there let nothing separate you from presenting yourself to the lord because jesus revealed it to abraham saying he who is eight days old among you in genesis chapter 17 verse 12 he is saying 
he who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised every male child in your generation he who is born in your house or bought with money those days they had slaves and so even they had to be circumcised and not just the slaves that they own but any foreigner who is not your descendant as long as he is there staying in your midst even they on the eighth day this is the statute that Lord had set for the entire descendants of Abraham and they had to keep it because God said those who break this covenant will be cut off from him In that same chapter Genesis chapter 17 verse 14 the Lord God Almighty is speaking to Abraham and saying the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin that person shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant the covenant that he made with the Lord let it continue in your life in the Old Testament to the Jews to the children and descendants of Abraham they had to be circumcised on the eighth day and they knew that and those who were not circumcised and did not enter this blood covenant then they will have no connection with the Lord after that another covenant I want to see that God made with a man and kept it is God's covenant with David we know that God kept his covenant with Abraham and that nation still exists and it will continue to exist and Jesus will come and he will be the king there in Jerusalem and Israel and he will rule there as the son of David because God entered another everlasting covenant with David a commitment to be faithful to him and his children 2nd Samuel chapter 7 verse 4 it tells about how the word of God comes to the prophet and God tells him go and tell my servant David and in verse 16 2nd Samuel chapter 7 God is saying and your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you your throne shall be established forever this is the word that he spoke to David again thousands of years ago and it is still kept and will be kept when Jesus Christ comes for when Jesus was to be born the angel Gabriel met Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 onwards and we can see that he's revealing to him revealing to her about Jesus Christ saying in verse 32 and 33 in Luke chapter 1 he will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David hundreds and thousands of years later the covenant that God made with David he has kept he sent his angel Gabriel and revealed it to Mary saying that Jesus Christ will have the throne of his father David that's why we see in the Gospels the lineage connecting Jesus with David connecting Jesus with Abraham how God is faithful and true to his word and when he makes a covenant he keeps his covenant and about Jesus it is said in verse 33 he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end only God can make statements like that and keep it and he has revealed that a new heaven and a new earth is coming it means that he can keep it and if you follow him then definitely you will find your place there and the last covenant that I want to see is the covenant that you and I can take part in the first two were for Abraham and his descendants and for David and his descendants but to the church to each of you follow Jesus Christ this new everlasting covenant is a covenant that Jesus made with you and is revealed in his word that you read almost every service that we gather together that is in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 24 onwards where Paul says that Jesus when he had given thanks he took the bread and he broke it and said take heat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood that first covenant he made with Abraham 
to make him a great nation and a blessing to all the nations of the world was a blood covenant and the second blood covenant is the blood that was spilled by Jesus Christ at the cross and that's why he's saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes just like how he told Abraham on the eighth day every male child has to keep the covenant here he's saying as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup he's saying as often as you do it every time you do it every time you gather you do it you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes you are keeping that covenant with the Lord God Hebrews chapter 13 verse 20 says that through the blood of the everlasting covenant the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead that great shepherd of the sheep that is the church he has committed to be the God forever through the blood of this everlasting covenant that is why it is important for you every time we gather here as a church to be here and not miss that covenant that Jesus made with us so that you can present yourself so that you can say here I am Lord I keep my part of the agreement I keep my part of the commitment I keep my part of the covenant with you Numbers chapter 9 verse 13 they knew how important it is to keep certain feasts here it tells about the Passover which showed the Lamb of God will come from heaven down to earth Jesus Christ who will be the Passover Lamb and they even before he came had to keep the Passover showing the thing that will take place and so it is said but the man who is clean and is not on a journey and ceases to keep the Passover that was instituted the man who is clean and not on a journey and ceases to keep the Passover that same person shall be cut off from among his people when they do not keep the Passover then that person who does not keep that Passover will be cut off from his people why because he did not bring the offering of the Lord at its appointed time and that man shall bear his sin you got to keep your part of the deal you got to know God takes it seriously that's how it was for the children of Israel in the Old Testament they could not miss on the Passover because it represented the connection with the Lord Jesus Christ and in that nation they had to present themselves for three festivals compulsorily every year it says in Deuteronomy 16 16 three times a year all your male shall appear before the Lord your God in the place which he chooses at the feast of the unleavened bread at the feast of the weeks and at the feast of the tabernacles and they shall not appear before the Lord empty-handed but there were a group of people two and a half tribes with it thought that they could do whatever they wanted they were the tribe of Reuben and Manasseh and Gad they thought that they could separate themselves from the Lord because the land was good the location was good but they were cut off why second Kings chapter 10 verse 32 tells that the Lord began to cut off parts of Israel and Hazel conquered them in all the territory of Israel and the Jordan eastward and it tells what that land belonged to all the land of Gilead Gad Reuben and Manasseh and it tells from which position to which position the Lord gave up on them he would not protect that land why they set up their own altar because when they were with Moses even before they crossed the Jordan numbers chapter 32 was one because they had a great livestock a great multitude a very great multitude and the region and that place was very comfortable very appropriate for the livestock that they had they came to Moses and they told him do not take us over the Jordan let us stay here that was a big error and a big mistake that they made because the Jordan separated them they were too far from the house of God from the tabernacle they could not come and present themselves three times a year imagine the entire country had to leave everything behind for even weeks so that they can travel and come and be there and go back 
showing themselves to the Lord that they were faithful and they're keeping that covenant with Him. It would have been difficult for them to come on that eighth day and be circumcised. It would have been difficult to come three times a year and present themselves to the Lord. That is why they were cut off. It says, they said, do not take us over the Jordan. Jordan shows the water baptism where Jesus himself was baptized. They were not willing to commit and pass through that commitment and that covenant position place in their life. That's why Moses said to them, shall your brethren go to war while you sit here? They had not conquered the entire land. They had not crossed over Jordan. The days of Joshua are not yet, but they had already decided that they will set and position themselves there. And so he's asking them, shall your brethren go to war without you while you sit here? Each and every one of you belong to the house of God. You're supposed to be there when we gather in his name. While everyone comes here and fights with the forces of darkness so that the plan of God, so that the favor of God would continue over a life, you cannot be sitting by yourself. The words that Moses asked, God still speaks and asks, saying, Shall your brethren go to war while you sit without joining with them? Numbers 30 to 7, again, Moses is saying, Now, why will you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord had given them? You got to join along. You got to be there in the company of God in the church of Jesus Christ so that the others are not discouraged when they come and they look around and they see many people missing then they are not encouraged I've seen people they come and they look around and when there are a lot of people there's a lot of excitement when those who are supposed to be there and that persons are not there then a lot of people seem to get discouraged I don't encourage that I don't want anyone to be discouraged but we can sense and feel and see that when people are missing in that spot in that position what they're supposed to do they're not there doing it then automatically a kind of discouragement seems to set on the people who've come here to praise and worship God therefore you make it a point to be here so that you're not a discouragement to your fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ but that separation that deviation that slow backsliding resulted in what they built an altar by the Jordan a great and impressive altar to almost rival the tabernacle and the church and the temple that was there in Jerusalem because they knew that they could not cross over the Jordan at all times and even the nation of Israel had to cross over supernaturally when the priest stood in the river then the water parted that's how they crossed over they didn't have a bridge built there that they could just walk across anytime they wanted and so they started that decay at that time right in the days of Joshua chapter 22 verse 10 it says that they built an altar by Jordan so much so that Joshua and all the whole congregation of the Lord asked them what treachery is this in Joshua chapter 22 verse 16 what treachery is this that you've committed against the Lord God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord in that you have built an altar for yourself that you might rebel this day against the Lord you've got to follow the word of God and for the children of Israel the appointed place even as he told them you will worship that God in that appointed place at that appointed time but they were not willing to follow it you need to keep your eternal commitment to God then you will receive an eternal inheritance because Jesus has prepared and he's done it all and he's got it all ready Hebrews 9 15 says and for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance God wants to give it to you it is his good pleasure to give you all things on this earth and also all the things that you need for all of eternity keep true to him keep following why don't you stand up wherever you are make the decision in your heart you can close your eyes and see where you are in the Lord Jesus Christ how true are you in that covenant that you made with him how committed are you are you still following him I still 
having that spirit of worship being truthful to him because this lockdown is almost we even lost a number of times it's locked down and opened up and locked down and opened up every time it is like a wake up call for all of us for everyone in all the nations hardly any place any nation has not been touched by the things that are happening on earth right now in 2022 january it's like in the schools before the assembly starts nowadays children don't even have an assembly but i remember when i was in school 3 years ago they would have had assembly for those who were there at that time and i remember when i was in school if the school assembly is at 9 o'clock then they start giving warning bells or reminder bells they'll ring the school bell 5 minutes before that and all the children wherever they might be in their classrooms or outside somewhere in the compound they'll give a short bell and then at once they will have to prepare and drop everything that they're doing pack up the things and get ready to go and be in that place where they assemble and stand there along with their classmates in a particular order of fashion whatever they decide and when all are ready finally that final bell will be a long bell that will ring and then they will start the assembly and it means that the school day has started and the gates of the school will be shut after that no one will be allowed inside after that those who come late will have to stand outside they cannot walk in and stand with their classmates or with their class because there will be a disturbance i see each and every time they lock down and all the things that are happening is like a bell to god is ringing and allowing these things to happen he's not doing it but he's allowing it to happen so that we will realize that the end of the age is at hand always looking for the day of the lord is what we are instructed to do to watch and to look so that we will not be taken by surprise god is the one who's holding the entire earth because he's holding it we are all safe but as he's written in his word when the church is taken up and the world is given over to the lawless one that's when people will realize the difference between when god's mercy and compassion and his protection was on earth right now many might accuse god like as if he's the one who's causing the trouble he is not because his hand is upon the earth the destruction is less because his mercy and his favor is still there it is still the acceptable hour it is still the acceptable day now is the acceptable day now is the acceptable hour now is the day of salvation it has not been removed only when the church and the holy spirit are removed from being in control then real pain and suffering and darkness and sadness will descend upon the earth that's when the people will feel the difference when god allows these small things to take place let us prepare ourselves and be ready so that not one of you will be left behind not one of you hear this not one in the church would have to should have to endure anything that the world will face oh pray to your god say oh lord here i am prepare my heart prepare my mind oh lord i renew my covenant with you i keep my covenant with you i will follow you lord jesus daily i'll pick up the cross and let go of the things of the world that separate me from you i will be faithful to your call lead me on jesus i want to be with you for all of eternity I declare you Lord Jesus Christ as my only Lord God and Savior. Oh yes, clap your hands. Oh, this morning once again. Oh, even as they made the commitment, we ask oh Lord that you lead them. Oh, that you'll guide them. Oh, that you'll shine your light.
Let not one of them be lost, O oh God. Share mercy and compassion on your church and upon the people of the world. Oh, that your salvation, your deliverance would be near and always present in their life. Oh, we run into your secret place. Hide each and every one under the shadow of your wings. May your will be done in their life. And oh Lord, may your glory rise upon them. Bless each and every one. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus mighty name. And bless and pray. Amen. Why don't you clap your hands this morning and give glory to the God. Who created who is leading you. Oh let it be exalted over your life. Thursday morning.